Harlan J. Ellison, May 27, 1934 to June 28, 2018, was an American writer known for his prolific and influential work in new wave speculative fiction and for his outspoken combative personality. Robert Bloch, the author of Psycho, described Ellison as the only living organism I know whose natural habitat is hot water. His published works include more than 1,700 short stories, novellas, screenplays, comic book scripts, teleplays, essays, and a wide range of criticism covering literature, film, television, and print media. Some of his best-known work includes the Star Trek episode, The City on the Edge of Forever. His A Boy and His Dog Cycle, and his short stories, I Have No Mouth, and I Must Scream, and Repent, Harlequin, said the TikTokman. He was also editor and anthologist for Dangerous Visions 1967 and again, Dangerous Visions 1972. Ellison won numerous awards, including multiple Hugos, Nebulas, and Edgars. Biography Early life and career Ellison was born to a Jewish family in Cleveland, Ohio, on May 27, 1934, the son of Sirita Rosenthal, and Louis Laverne Ellison, a dentist and jeweler. His family subsequently moved to Painesville, Ohio, but returned to Cleveland in 1949, following his father's death. Ellison frequently ran away from home, taking an array of odd jobs, including, by age 18, tuna fishermen off the coast of Galveston, itinerant crop picker down in New Orleans, hired gun for a wealthy neurotic, nitroglycerin truck driver in North Carolina, short order cook, cab driver, lithographer, book salesman, floorwalker in a department store, door-to-door -door brush salesman, and as a youngster, an actor in several productions at the Cleveland Playhouse. In 1947, a fan letter he wrote to Real Fact Comics became his first published writing. Ellison attended Ohio State University for 18 months (1951–53) before being expelled. He said the expulsion was for hitting a professor who had denigrated his writing ability, and over the next twenty or so years he sent that professor a copy of every story he published. Ellison published two serialized stories in the Cleveland News during 1949, and he sold a story to EC Comics early in the 1950s. During this period, Ellison was an active and visible member of science fiction fandom, and published his own science fiction fanzines, such as Dimensions which had previously been the Bulletin of the Cleveland Science Fantasy Society for the Cleveland Science Fantasy Society, and later Science Fantasy Bulletin. Ellison moved to New York City in 1955 to pursue a writing career, primarily in science fiction. Over the next two years, he published more than 100 short stories and articles. The short stories collected as Sex Gang—which Ellison described in a 2012 interview as mainstream erotica. Date from this period, he served in the U.S. Army from 1957 to 1959. His first novel, Web of the City, was published during his military service in 1958, and he said he had written the bulk of it while undergoing basic training at Fort Benning, Georgia. After leaving the Army, he relocated to Chicago, where he edited Rogue magazine. Topic. 
Topic: <laughs> Hollywood and beyond. Ellison moved to California in 1962, and subsequently began to sell his writing to Hollywood. He co-wrote the screenplay for the Oscar 1966, starring Stephen Boyd and Elka Sommer. Ellison also sold scripts to many television shows, The Loretta Young Show, using the name Harlan Ellis, The Flying Nun, Burke's Law, Route 66, The Outer Limits, Star Trek, The Man from Uncle, Cimarron Strip, and The Alfred Hitchcock Hour. Ellison's screenplay for the Star Trek episode, The City on the Edge of Forever has been considered the best of the 79 episodes in the series. In 1965, he participated in the Selma to Montgomery marches led by Martin Luther King Jr. In 1966, in an article that Esquire magazine would later name as the best magazine piece ever written, the journalist Gay Talese wrote about the goings on around Frank Sinatra. The article, entitled Frank Sinatra has a cold," briefly describes a clash between the young Harlan Ellison and Frank Sinatra, when the crooner took exception to Ellison's boots during a billiards game. Ellison was hired as a writer for Walt Disney Studios but was fired on his first day after Roy O. Disney overheard him in the studio commissary joking about making a pornographic animated film featuring Disney characters. Ellison continued to publish short fiction and non-fiction pieces in various publications, including some of his best-known stories, "'Repent, Harlequin, Said the TikTokman' 1965 is a celebration of civil disobedience against repressive authority, "'I have no mouth, and I must scream' 1967 is an allegory of hell, where five humans are tormented by an all-knowing computer throughout eternity. The story was the basis of a 1995 computer game. Ellison participated in the game's design and provided the voice of the god computer AM. Another story, A Boy and His Dog examines the nature of friendship and love in a violent, post-apocalyptic world and was made into the 1975 film of the same name, starring Don Johnson. Ellison served as creative consultant to the 1980s version of the Twilight Zone science fiction TV series and Babylon 5. As a member of the Screen Actors Guild (SAG), he had voiceover credits for shows including The Pirates of Dark Water, Mother Goose and Grimm, Space Cases, Phantom 2040, and Babylon 5, as well as making an on-screen appearance in the Babylon 5 episode, The Face of the Enemy. Ellison's short story, The Man Who Rode Christopher Columbus Ashore. 1992 was selected for inclusion in the 1993 edition of the Best American Short Stories. In 2014, Ellison made a guest appearance on the album Finding Love in Hell by the stoner metal band Leaving Babylon, reading his piece, The Silence, originally published in Mind Fields as an introduction to the song, Dead to Me. Ellison's official website, harlonellison.com, was launched in 1995 as a fan page. For several years, Ellison was a regular poster in its discussion forum. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Personal life and death. Ellison married five times, each relationship ended within a few years, except the last. His first wife was Charlotte Stein, whom he married in 1956. They divorced in 1960, and he later described the marriage as, four years of hell as sustained as the wine of a generator." Later that year he married Billy Joyce Sanders, they divorced in 1963. 
His 1966 marriage to Loretta Patrick lasted only seven weeks. In 1976, he married Laurie Horowitz. He was 41 and she was 19, and he later said of the marriage, "'I was desperately in love with her, but it was a stupid marriage on my part.'" They were divorced after eight months. He and Susan Toth married in 1986, and they remained together, living in Los Angeles, until his death 32 years later. Ellison described himself as a Jewish atheist. In 1994, he suffered a heart attack and was hospitalized for quadruple coronary artery bypass surgery. From 2010, he received treatment for clinical depression. In September 2007, Ellison made his last public appearance in his hometown of Cleveland, Ohio, for the Midwestern debut of the documentary Dreams with Sharp Teeth at Cleveland Public Library. On about October 10, 2014, Ellison suffered a stroke. Although his speech and cognition were unimpaired, he suffered paralysis on his right side, for which he was expected to spend several weeks in physical therapy before being released from the hospital. Harlan Ellison died at his home in Los Angeles in the morning of June 28, 2018. Topic: Pseudonyms. Ellison on occasion used the pseudonym Cordwainer Bird to alert members of the public to situations in which he felt his creative contribution to a project had been mangled beyond repair by others, typically Hollywood producers or studios see also Alan Smithy. The first such work to which he signed the name was, "...The Price of Doom." An episode of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea though it was misspelled as Cord Wainer Bird in the credits. An episode of Burke's Law, Who Killed Alex Debs? credited to Ellison contains a character given this name, played by Sammy Davis Jr. The Cord Wainer Bird moniker is a tribute to fellow SF writer Paul M. A. Linbarger, better known by his pen name, Cord Wainer Smith. The origin of the word, Cordwainer, is shoemaker, from working with cordovan leather for shoes. The term used by Lynn Barger was meant to imply the industriousness of the pulp author. Ellison said, in interviews and in his writing, that his version of the pseudonym was meant to mean, a shoemaker for birds. Since he used the pseudonym mainly for works he wanted to distance himself from, it may be understood to mean that, "...this work is for the birds", or that it is of as much use as shoes to a bird. Stephen King once said he thought that it meant that Ellison was giving people who mangled his work a literary version of, "...the bird", given credence by Ellison himself in his own essay titled, Somehow, I don't think we're in Kansas, Toto. Describing his experience with the Starlost television series, the Bird moniker became a character in one of Ellison's own stories. In his book Strange Wine, Ellison explains the origins of the bird and goes on to state that Philip Jose Farmer wrote Cordwainer into the Wald Newton family the latter writer had developed. The thought of such a whimsical object lesson being related to such lights as Doc Savage, The Shadow, Tarzan, and all the other pulp heroes prompted Ellison to play with the concept, resulting in the New York Review of Bird, in which an annoyed bird uncovers the darker secrets of the New York literary establishment before beginning a pulpish slaughter of the same. Other pseudonyms Ellison used during his career include J. Charby, Slee Harson, Ellis Hart, John Magnus, Paul Merchant, Pat Roda, Eva Jorgensen, Derry Tiger, Harlan Ellis, and J. Solo. Topic. Controversies and disputes
Topic: <laughs> Temperament. Ellison had a reputation for being abrasive and argumentative. Ellison generally agreed with this assessment, and a dust jacket from one of his books described him as possibly the most contentious person on earth. Ellison filed numerous grievances and attempted lawsuits. As part of a dispute about fulfillment of a contract, he once sent 213 bricks to a publisher postage due, followed by a dead gopher via fourth class mail. In an October 2017 piece in Wired, Ellison was dubbed, Sci Fi's most controversial figure. At Stephen King's request, Ellison provided a description of himself and his writing in Dance Macabre, My work is foursquare for chaos. I spend my life personally, and my work professionally, keeping the soup boiling. Gadfly is what they call you when you are no longer dangerous, I much prefer troublemaker, malcontent, desperado. I see myself as a combination of Zorro and Jiminy Cricket. My stories go out from here and raise hell. From time to time some denigrator or critic with umbrage will say of my work, he only wrote that to shock, I smile and nod. Precisely. Topic. Star Trek Ellison repeatedly criticized how Star Trek creator and producer Gene Roddenberry and others rewrote his original script for the 1967 episode, The City on the Edge of Forever. Despite his objections, Ellison kept his own name on the shooting script instead of using Cordwainer Bird. To indicate displeasure, see above. Ellison's original script was first published in the 1976 anthology Six Science Fiction Plays, edited by Roger Elwood. The aired version was adapted for the Star Trek photonovel series in 1977. In 1995, Borderlands Press published The City on the Edge of Forever, with nearly 300 pages, comprising an essay by Ellison, four versions of the teleplay, and eight «afterwards» contributed by other parties. He greatly expanded the introduction for the paperback edition, in which he explained what he called a «fatally inept» Treatment. Both versions of the script won awards. Ellison's original script won the 1968 Writers Guild Award for Best Episodic Drama in Television, while the shooting script won the 1968 Hugo Award for Best Dramatic Presentation. On March 13, 2009, Ellison sued CBS Paramount Television, seeking payment of 25% of net receipts from merchandising publishing, and other income from the episode since 1967. The suit also names the Writers Guild of America for allegedly failing to act on Ellison's behalf. On October 23, 2009, Variety magazine reported that a settlement had been reached. Topic Vietnam War Opposition and Aggie Con I. Ellison was among those who in 1968 signed an anti-Vietnam War advertisement in Galaxy Science Fiction. In 1969, Ellison was guest of honor at Texas A&M University's first science fiction convention, Aggie Con, where he reportedly referred to the university's Corps of Cadets as America's next generation of Nazis, inspired in part by the continuing Vietnam War. Although the university was no longer solely a military school from 1965, the student body was predominantly made up of cadet members. 
Between Ellison's anti-military remarks and a food fight that broke out in the ballroom of the hotel where the gathering was held although according to Ellison in 2000, the food fight actually started in a Denny's because the staff disappeared and they could not get their check, the school's administration almost refused to approve the science fiction convention the next year, and no guest of honor was invited for the next two AggieCons. However, Ellison was subsequently invited back as guest of honor for Aggie Con V 1974. Topic: The Last Dangerous Visions. The Last Dangerous Visions (TLDV), the third volume of Ellison's anthology series, was originally announced for publication in 1973 but remains unpublished. Nearly 150 writers, many now dead, submitted works for the volume. In 1993, Ellison threatened to sue New England Science Fiction Association (NESFA) for publishing himself in Anacron", a short story written by Cordwainer Smith and sold to Ellison for the book by his widow, but later reached an amicable settlement. British science fiction author Christopher Priest criticized Ellison's editorial practices in an article entitled, The Book on the Edge of Forever, later expanded into a book. Priest documented a half dozen unfulfilled promises by Ellison to publish TLDV within a year of the statement. Priest claims he submitted a story at Ellison's request, which Ellison retained for several months until Priest withdrew the story and demanded that Ellison return the manuscript. Ellison was incensed by, Book on the Edge of Forever and, personally or by proxy, threatened Priest on numerous occasions since its publication. I, Robot Shortly after the release of Star Wars 1977, Ben Roberts contacted Ellison to develop a script based on Isaac Asimov's I, Robot short story collection for Warner Brothers. Ellison and Asimov had been longtime friends prior to Asimov's death, so Ellison may be presumed to have attached particular significance to the project. In a meeting with the head of production at Warner's, Robert Shapiro, Ellison concluded that Shapiro was commenting on the script without having read it and accused him of having the "...intellectual and cranial capacity of an artichoke." Shortly afterwards, Ellison was dropped from the project. Without Ellison, the film came to a dead end, because subsequent scripts were unsatisfactory to potential directors. After a change in studio heads, Warner allowed Ellison's script to be serialized in Isaac Asimov's science fiction magazine and published in book form. The 2004 film I, Robot, starring Will Smith, has no connection to Ellison's script. <laughs> Allegations of assault on Charles Platt In 1985 Ellison allegedly publicly assaulted author and critic Charles Platt at the Nebula Awards banquet. Platt did not pursue legal action against Ellison, and the two men later signed a «non-aggression pact», promising never to discuss the incident again nor to have any contact with one another. Platt claims that Ellison often publicly boasted about the incident. Topic: 2006 Hugo Awards Ceremony. Ellison was presented with a special committee award at the 2006 Hugo Awards Ceremony. When Ellison got to the podium, presenter Connie Willis asked him, "Are you going to be good?" 
When she asked the question a second time, Ellison put the microphone in his mouth, to the crowd's laughter. He then momentarily put his hand on her left breast. Ellison subsequently complained that Willis refused to acknowledge his apology. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Lawsuit against Fantagraphics. On September 20, 2006, Ellison sued comic book and magazine publisher Fantagraphics, stating they had defamed him in their book comics as art. We told you so. The book recounts the history of Fantagraphics and discussed a lawsuit that resulted from a 1980 Ellison interview with Fantagraphics Industry News magazine, The Comics Journal. In this interview Ellison referred to comic book writer Michael Fleischer, calling him, "...bug fuck", and, "...derange o". Fleischer lost his libel suit against Ellison and Fantagraphics on December 9, 1986. Ellison, after reading unpublished drafts of the book on Fantagraphics's website, believed that he had been defamed by several anecdotes related to this incident. He sued in the Superior Court for the State of California, in Santa Monica. Fantagraphics attempted to have the lawsuit dismissed. In their motion to dismiss, Fantagraphics argued that the statements were both their personal opinions and generally believed to be true anecdotes. On February 12, 2007, the presiding judge ruled against Fantagraphics' anti-slap motion for dismissal. On June 29, 2007, Ellison claimed that the litigation had been resolved pending Fantagraphics' removal of all references to the case from their website. No money or apologies changed hands in the settlement as posted on August 17, 2007. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Copyright suits. In a 1980 lawsuit against ABC and Paramount Pictures, Ellison and Ben Bova claimed that the TV series Future Cop was based on their short story, Brillo, winning a $337,000 judgment. Ellison alleged that James Cameron's film The Terminator drew from material from an episode of the original Outer Limits, which Ellison had scripted, Soldier, 1964. Hemdale, the production company and the distributor Orion Pictures, settled out of court for an undisclosed sum and added a credit to the film which acknowledged Ellison's work. Cameron objected to this acknowledgement and has since labeled Ellison's claim a nuisance suit. Ellison publicly referred to The Terminator as a good film. Some accounts of the settlement state that another Outer Limits episode written by Ellison, "'Demon with a Glass Hand' also 1964, was also claimed to have been plagiarized by the film, but Ellison explicitly stated that, "'Terminator was not stolen from Demon with a Glass Hand, it was a rip-off of my other Outer Limits script, Soldier. On April 24, 2000, Ellison sued Stephen Robertson for posting four stories to the newsgroup, alt.binaries.e book, without authorization. The other defendants were AOL and Remark, Internet service providers who owned servers hosting the newsgroup. Ellison alleged they had failed to halt copyright infringement in accordance with the notice and takedown procedure", outlined in the 1998 Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Robertson and Remark first settled with Ellison, and then AOL likewise settled with Ellison in June 2004, under conditions that were not made public. Since those settlements Ellison initiated legal action or takedown notices against more than 240 people who have allegedly distributed his writings on the Internet, saying, 
if you put your hand in my pocket, you'll drag back six inches of bloody stump." A lawsuit involving the film In Time 2011, which Ellison contended plagiarizes his short story, "'Repent, Harlequin, said the TikTokman." first published in 1965, was withdrawn after Ellison viewed the film. As part of the agreement to dismiss his lawsuit, Ellison agreed that each party would bear its own attorney's fees. Works <laughs> 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 Awards Ellison won eight Hugo Awards, a shared award for the screenplay of A Boy and His Dog that he counted as half a Hugo, and two special awards from annual World SF Conventions, four Nebula Awards of the Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America SFWA, five Bram Stoker Awards of the Horror Writers Association HWA, two Edgar Awards of the Mystery Writers of America, two World Fantasy Awards from annual conventions, and two Georges Méliès Fantasy Film Awards, in his 1981 book about the horror genre, Dance Macabre, Stephen King reviewed Ellison's collection Strange Wine and considered it one of the best horror books published between 1950 and 1980. Ellison won the World Fantasy Award for Life Achievement in 1993. HWA gave him its Lifetime Achievement Award in 1996 and the World Horror Convention named him Grand Master in 2000. He was awarded the Gallen Award for Lifetime Achievement in Science Fiction from Icon in 1997. SFWA named him its 23rd Grand Master of Fantasy and Science Fiction in 2006, and the Science Fiction Hall of Fame inducted him in 2011. That year he also received the 4th J. Lloyd Eaton Lifetime Achievement Award in Science Fiction, presented by the UCR Libraries at the 2011 Eaton SF Conference. Global Science Fiction. As of 2013, Ellison is the only three-time winner of the Nebula Award for Best Short Story. He won his other Nebula in the novella category. He was awarded the Silver Pen for Journalism by International Pen, the International Writers' Union, in 1982. In 1990, Ellison was honored by International Pen for continuing commitment to artistic freedom and the battle against censorship. In 1998, he was awarded the Defender of Liberty. Award by the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund. In March 1998, the National Women's Committee of Brandeis University honored him with their 1998 Words, Wit, Wisdom Award. Ellison was named 2002's winner of the Committee for the Scientific Investigation of Claims of the Paranormals. Distinguished Skeptic Award, in recognition of his contributions to science and critical thinking. Ellison was presented with the award at the Skeptics Convention in Burbank, California, on June 22, 2002. In December 2009, Ellison was nominated for a Grammy Award in the category Best Spoken Word Album for Children for his reading of Through the Looking Glass and What Alice Found There for Blackstone Audio, Inc. Academy of Science Fiction, Fantasy, and Horror Films USA Golden Scroll Best Writing, Korea 1976 American Mystery Award, Soft Monkey Best Short Story, 1988 Asimov's Science Fiction Magazine Reader's Polly, Robot Screenplay Special Award, 1988 Audio Publishers Association The Titanic Disaster Hearings, the official transcript of the 1912 Senatorial Investigation Best Multi-Voiced Presentation, 1999 
City of Darkness Best Solo Narration, 1999 Best American Short Stories, The Man Who Rode Christopher Columbus Ashore, included in the 1993 anthology The Bradbury Award given by the Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America in 2000 to Harlan Ellison and Yuri Rasovsky for the radio series 2000X. Bram Stoker Award The Essential Ellison Best Collection, 1987 Harlan Ellison's Watching Best Nonfiction, 1989 Tie Mephisto in Onyx Best Novella, 1993 Tie Chatting with Anubis Best Short Story, 1995 Lifetime Achievement Award, 1995 I Have No Mouth, and I Must Scream Best Other Media, Audio, 1999 British Fantasy Award, "'Jeff T is Five, Best Short Story, 1979 British Science Fiction Award Deathbird Stories Best Collection, 1978 Deathrealm Award Chatting with Anubis Best Short Fiction, 1996 Edgar Allan Poe Award, "'The Whimper of Whipped Dogs' Best Short Story, 1974 "'Soft Monkey' Best Short Story, 1988 Georges Méliès Fantasy Film Award A Man with a Glass Hand, The Outer Limits Achievement in Science Fiction Television, 1972 The City on the Edge of Forever, Star Trek Achievement in Science Fiction Television, 1973 Hugo Award Repent, Harlequin, said the TikTokman Best Short Fiction, 1966. I Have No Mouth, and I Must Scream. Best Short Story, 1968. The City on the Edge of Forever, Best Dramatic Presentation, 1968. Dangerous Visions, World Cup Special Award, 1968. The Beast That Shouted Love at the Heart of the World", Best Short Story, 1969 Again, Dangerous Visions, World Cup Special Award for Excellence in Anthologizing, 1972 The Death Bird, Best Novelette, 1974 Adrift just off the islets of Langer Hands, latitude 38 degrees 54 n, longitude 77 degrees 00 13. W Best Novelette, 1975 A Boy and His Dog film, Best Dramatic Presentation, 1976 the Hugo was originally given to L. Q. Jones, the film's producer and screenwriter. After the ceremony, Ellison complained that as author of the original story upon which Jones's screenplay was based, he deserved to share in the award. No extra Hugo statuette was available, so to mollify Ellison, he received a Hugo base, which he calls his half Hugo. Jeff T is 5. Best Short Story, 1978. Paladin of the Lost Hour. Best Novelette, 1986. International Horror Guild Award 1994. Living Legend Award Jupiter Award. Instructors of Science Fiction in Higher Education. The Death Bird. Best Short Story, 1973. Jeff T is 5. Best Short Story, 1977 Locus Pole Award The Region Between Best Short Fiction, 1971 Basilisk Best Short Fiction, 1973 Again, Dangerous Visions Best Anthology, 1973 The Deathbird Best Short Fiction, 1974 
adrift just off the islets of Langer Hans, latitude 38 degrees 54 n, longitude 77 degrees 00, 13 w Best Novelette, 1975. Croatoan Best Short Story, 1976. Jeff T is 5. Best Short Story, 1978. Best Short Story of All Time, 1999 online poll. Count the Clock That Tells the Time. Best Short Story, 1979. Gin, No Chaser. Best Novelette, 1983. Sleepless Nights in the Procrustean Bed Introduction Best Related Nonfiction 1985 Medea Harlan's World Best Anthology 1986 Paladin of the Lost Hour Best Novelette 1986 With Virgil Autumn at the East Pole Best Short Story 1986 Angry Candy Best Collection 1989 The Function of Dream Sleep Best Novelette 1989 Idolands Best Short Story 1989 Mephisto in Onyx Best Novella 1994 Slippage Best Collection 1998 Nebula Award quote, quote, Repent, Harlequin. Said the TikTokman. Best Short Story, 1966. A Boy and His Dog. Best Novella, 1970. Jeff T is Five. Best Short Story, 1978. Grand Master Award at Tempe, Arizona, May 6, 2006. How Interesting, A Tiny Man", Best Short Story, tied with K. I. J. Johnson, "'Ponies", 2011 Prometheus Award, quote, quote, "'Repent, Harlequin", said the TikTokman, 2015 Hall of Fame inductee Saturn Award A Boy and His Dog Best Fantasy Film, 1976 Writers Guild of America Demon with a Glass Hand, The Outer Limits Best Original Teleplay, 1965 The City on the Edge of Forever, Star Trek Best Original Teleplay, 1967 Phoenix Without Ashes, The Star Lost Best Written Dramatic Episode, 1974 Paladin of the Lost Hour, The Twilight Zone Best Anthology Episode, Single Program, 1987 Writers Guild of Canada Human Operators, The Outer Limits 2000 World Fantasy Award Angry Candy Best Collection, 1989 Lifetime Achievement Award, 1993J. Lloyd Eaton Lifetime Achievement Award in Science Fiction 2011 Recipient Eaton Collection of Science Fiction and Fantasy, University of California Riverside Libraries Parodies and pastiches of Ellison In the 1970s artist and cartoonist Gordon Carlton wrote and drew a scripted slideshow called, "'City on the Edge of Whatever'", which was a spoof of, "'The City on the Edge of Forever'". Occasionally performed at Star Trek conventions, it features an irate writer named, "'Arlen Hellison", who screams at his producers, "'Art Defilers", "'Script Assassins", Ben Bova's novel The Star-Crossed a Roman A. Clef about Bova and Ellison's experience on the Starlost TV series, features a character, Ron Gabriel, who is a pastiche of Ellison. Bova's novel is dedicated to Ellison's pseudonym, Cordwainer Bird, who was credited as series creator on the Starlost per Ellison's demand. In the novel, Ron Gabriel 
requires the fictional series producers to credit him under the pseudonym, Victor Lawrence Talbot Frankenstein, in Murder at the Abba by Isaac Asimov. The protagonist, Darius Just, was based on Ellison, as stated by Asimov in footnotes to the book itself, and in his autobiographical volume in Joy Still Felt. Robert Silverberg named a character in his first novel, Revolt on Alpha C, for Ellison, who was Silverberg's neighbor in New York City at the time he was writing the book. This was confirmed in a special edition on the occasion of Silverberg's 35th year in the business. Sharon McCrum's mystery novel Bimbos of the Death Sunday (1988) featured a cantankerous antagonist turned murder victim based on Ellison. Fans of Ellison sent him copies of the book, and upon meeting Ellison later that year at the Edgar Awards, Ellison told McCrum he had read the book and thought it was good. Ellison is a recurring minor character in the television show Scooby Doo. Mystery Incorporated 2010 playing a fictionalized version of himself modeled on his appearance in the 1970s. Ellison appeared as himself in an episode of The Simpsons, "'Married to the Blob", 2014, in which he meets Bart and Milhouse, and parodies his contention that the film The Terminator used ideas from his stories. <laughs> <laughs> 